Hello again, pre-calculus students. To, uh, for this video, I want to introduce the concept of eccentricity of a conic section. Um, and I want to do it specifically with ellipses, since we've been looking at ellipses. Let's, uh, let's dive right in. So eccentricity for a conic is defined as C over A, where C is what it's always been for our conics. And well, C is our focal length, and A is our, um, well, A has different measurements for each conic, but the variables remain the same. So it's always C over A. So if you look at a circle, the focus is the center. So the distance from the center, you know, out to any point on the circle is A, but the center, the distance from the center to the focus is zero. So a circle has eccentricity zero. And eccentric, what do we mean when we say something is eccentric? Don't we mean it's a little bit weird in English? So a circle has no eccentricity at all. It's a perfect shape, according to the Greeks, probably. Now, an ellipse, eccentricity is also C over A. But since A squared minus B squared is always C squared, then um, a will always be bigger than C. By the way, conics will always, always, always curve around their focal points. You'll notice here's a, the focus is the center. The circle curves around it. Here are your focal points and an ellipse. They curve around it. <clears throat> you go back to a parabola. The, parab the parabola curves around the focal point. And we'll find the same with a hyperbola. So your curves will always go around your focal points. So in an ellipse, A must be bigger than C. Since A is bigger than C, your eccentricity will always be a number between zero and one. So we go from zero, we get a little bit bigger, you get an ellipse get a little bit bigger when E equals one, you get a parabola, I'll just tell you that. And when E is greater than one, you get a hyperbola. So these are your four conditions for eccentricity. Now, um, just to show you what it means for, um, when I said that, you know, E gets bigger and bigger, you go from a circle, gets a little bit bigger, you get an ellipse, gets a little bit bigger, you get a you know stretchier ellipse, et cetera. Let's take a look at that in the picture as far as ellipses go. You can see here that on this ellipse, the focal points are very close to the center. E is very small, or I'm sorry, C is very small compared to A. So you have a very um, small eccentricity. You can see that this almost looks like a circle. It's a little bit stretched out. This distance A is going to be a smidge bigger than this distance B. But it looks still pretty much like a circle. However, when you make when you move those focal points out here, now you can see that C is fairly close to A, you have a number, an eccentricity, pretty close to one. Not quite, but close to. And now you can see how this is obviously not a circle anymore, it's an ellipse. And well, so is this, but this is much more obviously an ellipse. And as your um, focal points move out farther and farther, um, relative to your A value, like I said, when equals one, you'll get a parabola, and when it's greater than one, you'll get a, a hyperbola. So let's just do a couple, or look at a couple of um, nifty things. Oops, there we go. Let's just look at a couple of nifty things that we can do um, with ellipses. We know that um, the orbit of the Earth around the sun is an ellipse. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna look up the exact value, but let's just say that the maximum distance, even though I know that's an average distance, the maximum distance is 93 million miles. 
it turns out that the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit is 0 0.0167. That means that orbit is pretty close to a circle, very close to a circle, but not quite. So our focal points would be, you know, if this is 93 million miles, our focal points would be just here, one and a half over here and one and a half over here. And you can do A squared minus C squared would give us B squared. So we could then get this distance from the sun. And again, I've, I've elongated it to make it pretty obvious that it's an ellipse, but it looks pretty close to a circle. So just for giggles, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so here's the sun. Again, this is not to scale by any stretch. And we all know that the Earth tilts on an axis. That's what gives us our seasons. And the dark blue on my picture is the northern hemisphere, where, well, at least where I live. So it turns out that the Earth is farther away from the sun in the summer than it is in the winter in the northern hemisphere. Now, remember, I've drawn this not to scale. It should be really, really close to a circle. But again, I've elongated it to um, just to show you how the ellipse works. The reason it's hotter up here in the summer than the winter is because the northern hemisphere is facing the sun. We're getting the direct rays of the sun where you can see they're getting only very shallow rays down in the southern hemisphere. So this is summertime. As we move around, now it's fall. Now it's winter and the northern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. That's why it gets cold. But again, we are closer to the sun in the winter than in the summer in the northern hemisphere. And over here is spring again. So that's just a little nifty um, thing of how the Earth goes around the sun, little application of ellipses. Here's another one. Have you ever seen that uh, it's like a pool game where um, you hit the balls, but the, but the table is oval? Ah, something nifty about that. Now, here's another old story. <clears throat> Turns out that ellipses have a really interesting property. You have two focal points. Anything that originates at this focal point, if it bounces off the ellipse, you see that this angle is equal to this angle, it gets directed to this focal point. From here, bounces off, goes to this focal point. This angle, these two angles are equal. Here here. Now, I've heard some very interesting um, stories about this. I've actually seen this in play in the United States Capitol. There, are, there is a, um, an elliptically shaped room, and if you stand on one side of it, you can um, whisper. I'm sorry, you stand on one focal point and whisper, and a person at the other focal point can hear you because the sound of your whispering is going in all directions and it's bouncing off the walls and it's all being reflected to this one spot. I have heard, don't know this to be true, but I've heard a story that um, in Cinderella's castle in um, Disneyland, there is a room that's shaped like this. And Walt Disney used to, you know, all the, all the studio heads used to um, meet, you know, they were all buds, they're all in the same business. And, um, when Disney would host, he'd put, you know, he'd all, they'd all meet in Cinderella's castle, and he had a room like this. So if he wanted to know what was going on over there at, at that studio, MGM or whatever, he would sit here, and he would have the head of the MGM sitting at a table or at a seat here. Now, this guy is just talking to his friends over at this table. Walt Disney's at this table, but if he's quiet, he can hear the whole conversation going on over here. I've heard it, don't know if it's true. I hope it's true though, because it's a really cool story. Um, I've often thought, you know, at um, our school we have what's called, um, oh, what is that? Uh, 
that physics event we have each year. Drawing a blank, growing old sucks. Anyway, we do um, physics experiments and bring in kids from the local elementary schools and it's a lot of fun. I've often thought, what if we made an elliptically shaped um, bowl or pond and you set up a nail or something so that you could just tap the surface of the water at this focal point. In theory, the ripples would expand out. They'd all, you know, where, whenever that ripple, wherever it hits the, whenever it hits the side of the ellipse, would uh, be reflected to the other ellipse, and, and it would coalesce. I think just as a thought game that if you tap the water here all the ripples should coalesce over here because this distance plus this distance is a constant this distance plus this distance is the same constant so you tap here the ripple expands everything gets bounced off the edge of the ellipse should coalesce over here you tap here it should spring up here that's my thought I don't know, but it sounds cool and I'm sticking with it. I'd love to do that experiment sometime. All righty, let's take a look at just a couple more problems with ellipses. I'll move this over because I don't know where my picture is interrupting us in the, uh, in the actual video. So here we have an ellipse with focal points 0, 0,5 and 0, negative 5. And as I said earlier, an ellipse will always, or a conic will always, always, always curve around its focal points. So here are the two focal points. It's curving around this way. We know that the distance from the center to the further um, vertex is going to be A, and the distance from the center to the closer vertex is going to be B. The only things we are given in, um, in this problem are the two focal points and the eccentricity. Let's solve for the equation of this ellipse. We know it's gonna be x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. We also know that c is equal to five, and we know that a squared minus b squared is c squared, and we know that C over A is the eccentricity, four sevenths. And we know that C is five. So solving um, this set of proportions, we get A is 35 fourths. Think about that for a moment. All right. So now we know that a squared minus b squared is c squared. That's the equation that we're given. We know a, so we know a squared. See, we can swap b squared and c squared so that we can solve for b squared. We know what c squared is. So we get b squared is this. So if we square this, we get a squared is this number. b squared is this number. And there's the equation of your ellipse. Just algebra. I do have one more fun problem, very short. What if you get something that looks like this? You have three x squared over 16 plus y squared over nine equals one, what do you do? That's not standard form for an ellipse. Standard form is x squared over a squared, not something x squared over a squared. So what do you do? Well, you have x squared times 3 16 That's the same as dividing by 16 thirds. So you would just write it as x squared over 16 thirds. That's it for uh, eccentricity.
I hope you don't think I have any eccentricity. As far as I'm concerned, I am much like the circle. Eccentricity, zero. Don't say that's my looks on a scale of one to 10 either. That would be painful. Alrighty, um, that's it for this lesson. Have a great day.